Hello guys, in this video we will see how to create Azure database for MySQL 8 and we will see how to connect to MySQL 8 from MySQL Workbench. So I have connected to Azure portal. Then click on this menu, then click on all services or then here in search resources search for Azure database for C. We have the Azure database for my search complete text see we have azure database for mysql servers and azure database for mysql flexible servers but at the time of making this video we don't have this mysql azure database for mysql server even if you click on it again if you click on create see we don't have the azure database for mysql also see here single server is scheduled for retirement by this state okay so we have to select either this flexible server or wordpress with MySQL flexible server. Okay, so go back to home then search for Azure database for MySQL. Click on Azure database for MySQL flexible servers. See, at present we don't have any Azure database for MySQL flexible servers. So to create new one, you have to click on create or click on create. See, when we click on create, we have two options flexible server and WordPress with MySQL. Based on your requirement, you have to select. I'm going with Flexible Server. See here we have these four tabs. Basics, Networking, Security, Tags and Review and Create. In Basics, we have to provide the subscription type. If you have pre-trial, you select it. Otherwise, select the pay as you go. Then Resource Group. See, if you have any existing resource group, select from the drop down. Or if you want to create separate resource group, click on create new. Azure MySQL Databases. Click on OK. Then server details. Provide server name. I am giving AG MySQL 8. See. The server name must satisfied with these three rules. So, so server name not available. So, give the Azure MySQL prod. See, it is checking. See, all these conditions satisfied. So, then go to region. See, default is US East. Select the region from the list. Based on the region also, the price will be changed. Okay, next MySQL version. See, we have only these two. 8 or 5.7. I am going with 8.0. Okay. Then workload type. See, based on workload type, the cost will change. Suppose if you go for small or medium size databases, click on it, you will see. See, the cost has been changed. For tier 1 business, see, cost also changed here. This is the per month cost. Okay. I am going with development and our hobby projects. Okay. Based on your requirement, you have to select. Next, compute plus storage. See here, this is the minimum. If you want to increase this CPU cores and RAM you have, and storage, you have to click on this configure server. Here it has storage selected 20 gigabytes. So if you want to increase, click on configure server. See here, for config, the compute cost is 1200. The, see, the estimated cost is 1200. So if you select general purpose, the cost will be increased. Even if you select business critical it is higher than the previous one okay so i am going with burst table then select the compute size see you can select the ram size and cpu cost based on requirement i am going with the basing for and storage see default is 20 we want to give 30 i want to go with 30 so give it then cost will be changed okay if you okay with all the settings click on save see this is the cost per month Next, high availability. See, high availability not available for this development or hobby projects. Click on it. See, it is saying high availability in redundant zone during configure. Okay. If you want to click on click on it. See, the type is changed. So, I don't want. So, uncheck it. Then click on. Don't forget to select this development. Also, verify the cost. Okay. Then, authentication. See, authentication methods, we have three methods, MySQL authentication only, Microsoft Entra authentication only, then combination of 
the above ones. Okay, admin user, provide the admin user. I am giving the admin user as demo user. Also see here, the admin user must satisfy these three conditions. Then provide the then provide the password for this user. We have configured the basics. Then click on next. That is for networking. See, if you want connectivity method, if you want to connect public through public access, you have to select this radio button. Otherwise, click on private access. That is VNet integration. Okay, public access. Select this one. It will allow us to connect through internet. Then firewall rules. Suppose if you want to give the name, name, then provide the IP ranges. Okay. Or if you want to add your current IP, you have to click on add, add current client IP address. Okay. I'm not going to add. I will show you this later while we are going to connect to this Azure database for MySQL server. Then click on security. I'm going with the defaults. I'm not going to change. Click on tax. I'm not going to provide any tax. It's optional. You can provide as you require. Then if you work with all these, these four settings, click on create review and create. Also see here, estimated cost is 1200 per month. This may vary based on the settings. Okay. So this view the settings one more time. If you are working with all these settings, click on next, create. Otherwise, if you want to modify any one of them, go to particular tab and change or just click on change. Okay, anything is fine. If you okay with all the settings, click on create. See, it is asking create server without firewall rules or return to add firewall rules. Okay, we will create the firewall rules later also. Click on create server without firewall rules. See, deployment is completed. Click on go to resource. See, this is the overview. Or even if you want to go back and come here, click on home, click on Azure database for MySQL, flexible service. See, we have the one instance. See the status here. Type is Azure database for MySQL flexible service. Status is available, high availability disabled, and location, resource group name, subscription type. Okay. So click on this instance name. Click on this to hide the even if you want to hide, you have to click on this double less than symbols. Okay. First see the, the top options. Connect, view process list, delete, reset password, restore, restart, stop, refresh. Okay. So if you want to delete this first, you can click, click on this delete. But it is not recommended. If you want to reset the password of this demo user, you have to click on this reset password. If you want to restore from the existing backup, you have to click on this one. If you want to restart this Azure database for MySQL flexible server, you have to click on. If you want to stop, you have to click on stop. Okay. If you want to refresh, refresh. Suppose if you change anything, you can click on refresh. Then subscription type, subscription ID, resource group name, status that we have seen already. See, this is the server name and admin login. This is the admin login name which is used to connect to MySQL server and this is the MySQL server version and availability is one one okay and properties if you go to properties see here we can find the n number of the properties of mysql azure mysql okay recommendations monitoring tutorials you see, click on processes okay next see the left our your activity logs access control that is iam tax and compute plus storage networking databases and connect and other options server parameters if you want to set the server parameters for mysql see we have n number of parameters so here we are able to see only 20 if you want to see the other options click on this next okay so if you want to set the server level properties you have to click on the server parameters okay backup and restore see at present i don't have any backup so if you want to take backup you have to click on this backup locks if you want to see the locks here you can see here if you want to add add the lock okay so go up databases if you want to see these are the databases available if you want to create database click on this add button so it will create the database let me create a database after schools i'm not going to change anything click on save refresh 
still it is creating click on here see it has created successfully click on close click on refresh again see we have the database we can delete this one because this is user database see here schema or the data type is users but these four are system so we cannot delete them we can only delete the user schema or database okay that's fine now go to the overview now we will see how to connect to the this azure database for mysql flexible server okay first copy this one we will see how to connect from the mysql workbench if you haven't installed mysql workbench on your machine then go through the link provided in the video description and install it i have already installed search for mysql see mysql workbench click on it see these are the local connections click on this plus button then provide the connection name az mysql flexible server 8 this can be anything but we have to go here host name remove the host the host name then go to here see this is the host name copy it paste here and port is double three zero six that is for mysql and and username is demo user see here this is the username copy it and paste here then provide the password provide the password that we have provided that we have given at the time of making this host or instance click on ok now test the connection this will be failed because firewall settings let me click on test connection see it is not success if it is success we might receive error even if you click on ok it will throw error now click on it here it will throw the error see your connection attempt failed for the user this one and this is the host name and port number okay let me cancel then go to the then go to azure database for mysql flexible server host name i mean over you okay then click on this networking see first this must be checked and in firewall users you have to give the ip i am giving my ip then start ip address here it has selected my local ip even if you are unable to find here go to new tab then search for what is my ip address hit enter click on it click on it see here it will show ip so copy this ip then paste here also paste here but still we are unable to save also it is grayed out so to enable this save button click on the next row see now it is enabled for the art to click on save so click on save see updated security successfully go back click on it see we have successfully connected now click on schemas see we have the r2 scores suppose if you want to create new schema or database right click on it click on create schema then provide the schema name schema name or database and both are set so i am giving test one then click on apply click on see this is the syntax so click on apply here it will be shown click on finish okay now go to the overview click on databases see new database has been new user database has been added successfully okay this is gui method also you can create database by using create database easy r2 scores put the semicolon it is then select it and click on this execute button see create database success also we are unable to find so click on this refresh button see one more database or schema is added you go there refresh see new database has been added you can delete database or schema from here also select it select this one and click on delete confirmation click on continue see it has been deleted now if you go here refresh here that database or schema gone okay also we can connect my this azure database for mysql 
from the DBA one. As I told earlier, like Workbench, you can install DBware on Windows machines by going to the link provided in the video description. Okay, so I have already installed DBAware. DB, DBAware is the application. See, I have these two connections for the PostgreSQL. But now to connect to MySQL, click on this new database connection. In the list, select MySQL. If you are unable to find here, you have to search here. Okay, so click on MySQL, then click on next. Here, server host name, we have to give overview. Click on overview, copy the server name, then paste here. Port number is 3306. Provide the database name. I am giving R2 schools. Then username. See, this is the username. Copy it, paste here. Provide the password of that user. I don't want to save. Okay, remaining options. Okay. Then click on test connection. Again provide the password. Click on OK. It is success. Click on download. Click on OK. Click on finish. Click on it. Then provide the password. Okay. So we have to select this to be on. Okay, go to the settings, server parameters, next, see here required secure transport is on, so it is asking connecting required or prohibited, so if we disable this one, we will be able to click on off, then click on save, wait until this will be saved. Wait until this is complete. It is success. Now go to DBA expand. Now provide the password. Click on OK. See, we have successfully connected expand databases. See, we have both the databases. You want to create a table in this database. Right click on it. Click on SQL editor or just click on it. Select the SQL. See, they are selected after scores. Also, if you hover on the mouse, it will show you the connection properties. Okay, let me create a table. Create table student S number int S name worker. Select the entire command. Click on this execute button or F5. See, this success, refresh, expand this one, expand tables, see, right click on refresh, then we will be able to find, we see we have the student table, expand columns, see we have the columns, okay, also we can see the same in, expand after schools, expand tables, see we have the table, student, the last option is, see, go to flexible servers, click on the host name, or the instance name, I this one, if you are not using, you have to stop because Azure charges are based on the usage. So I am not using, so I am clicking on stop. So it will ask the confirmation. See, also notice here, server will automatically start it after 30 minutes. If you do not perform a manual start operation. Okay. So click on stop. Even if you don't want to use this anymore, you have to click on delete. Then it will ask the confirmation. Okay. Then you have to give the resource name. That is server name then select this one and click on delete okay i'm not going to delete so okay so in this video we have seen how to create azure database for mysql flexible server then we have seen how to connect to this by using mysql workbench and db -ver. so then we have seen how to create databases in azure database for mysql flexible servers for more mysql or azure or cloud videos please subscribe my channel thank you